So I got this DC to DC converter off of Amazon. I just want to post a review on uh, how well it performs. It's under 20 bucks. I think I got it for $17 or so. And so it's the um, Nextron, Nextrox, however you say it. Uh, DC to DC converter. It's rated from, looks like a nominal input of about 24 volts. Uh, it says you can go anywhere from 12 to 40. And your output is... Uh, bolts at 20 amps max it looks like it's um, sealed fairly decent although this looks like a rubberized coating it's not true potting material uh, it's supposed to be weatherized so it won't have any problems in the rain hopefully um, and so I want to run a bunch of tests on this and see what it's going to do in um, high voltage conditions low voltage conditions low current high current see what the ripple is on the um, DC DC converter and what its efficiency is so those are the tests I'm going to try and run on this. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, Sorensen DC to DC, or I'm sorry, Sorensen power supply. It's roughly a one kilowatt. I've had it for a while. And I'm going to use this as the input to these guys. So these will be the inputs to the DC to DC converter. These will be the outputs. Um, it's not an isolated DC to DC converter. It's just a basic buck style. So what it's going to do is it's going to take your input voltage uh, up to 40 volts and it'll buck it down to roughly 12. So let's see how it performs. Okay, these are the tests I'm going to run in this converter. Uh, this is seems like a, a common converter on Amazon.com. It's just repackaged and people put different nameplates or labeling on it. So I'm going to run this through kind of a what I think is a gamut of tests. It's not a definitive test for everything, but it kind of tells you how the, the converter will perform. So I'm going to do all these tests here and you guys can see what the results are. And if you wait till the end, you'll really see the, the fun stuff happen. I let the magic smoke out. Okay, this is some of the equipment I'm going to use for this test. I'm going to use a Fluke 115 meter um, custom load I kind of built up here a long time ago to drain NICAD battery packs. This is about a 0.5 to 0.6 ohms of resistance, so it'll suck a good 20 amps uh, real quick. There's obviously a dead bulb here, but... So this is what I'm going to use for my load. Um, also, another load tester. I think this does up uh, to roughly 5 amps at 12 volts. Uh, it'll put uh, a quarter amp or a quarter capacity load on it. I want to see how it handles the load. And then also, um, I'll get some scope shots with this uh, Rigel scope to see what it, how the load handles uh, instantaneously over time and some other values. Okay, here's my setup. So I have my DC to DC converter here. I've got my load here. It's beeping at me because there's no voltage. Nothing's been turned on yet. And I have the uh, DC to DC converter connected to the two terminals on the DCS3333 power supply uh, with a scope probe here. So that will be your yellow trace on the O-scope. And then this probe right here is connected to the actual load input. And that will be the blue scope trace. And then obviously this is the um, scope that I'm going to be using. So this is the basic setup. And we'll do some testing from here. Okay, so the next thing I want to test is for output stability. Um, the product is listed to do between an input of 12 volts to 40 volts. And the output is uh, supposed to be 12 volts. Uh, DC at the stable voltage. So I want to go ahead and test to make sure he's putting a light load here. I've got uh, 0.2 volts or I'm sorry 0.2 amps being drawn when I turn the supply on. Uh, I want to see how, how how stable that output is. So if you look at the yellow that'll be your power supply input which is a bus bar off of this guy and then the blue will be the uh, load output. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So it looks I'm at uh, 5.7. I'm going to turn up the supply a little bit. And you can see both the lines are creeping up a little bit. Almost about the same output. And it looks like about 12.3 is where it kind of stabilizes out. So that's when the uh, 
right here. So this is your input. I'm changing that, make it go on higher and higher, and your output's fixed at about 12.3. So that's a good sign. So I can jack this all the way up till as high as a supply will go. And it looks like your output's stable. Alright, so that works. That's good. So it looks like my it'll regulate down to I don't know about 12.3, 12.1. Then it starts uh, kind of following. See how it's just dropped right there. Then it starts following your your input. So 12 volts is about accurate. And again, this is at 200 milliamps and I don't know roughly 11.75 volts for the power supply output which is the input to the DC to DC converter. Okay, the next test I'm going to do, I'm going to put roughly a 5 amp load. This is in combination with, I think the max you can pull out of the um, load here is um, 60 watts or so, or maybe it's 30. But anyway, so my uh, current's going to be set at 4.93 amp. It's a max it can do at 12 volts. And I'm slowly going to rise uh, the power supply voltage, and I'm going to see how stable the output is with respect to voltage here. So this should ideally hover right around 12.3 um, volts. So let's give it a shot. All right, so we got 12.09 volts at the load, 12.10. And here you got, um, looks like 12.3. So there's a couple hundred millivolts difference, uh, not a big deal, minor error. So now we're going to crank this voltage up. Again, the yellow is the input to the DC to DC converter. Looks like the output's holding pretty steady, 12.3 volts. And as we crank this up to 30, roughly, it looks good. So at a roughly 5 amp load, um, it's Looks like it's pretty stable. So the next thing I want to test for is load regulation, which is how well can it handle putting uh, different values of loads on and still maintain that voltage. So now we're at roughly 24 volts. Um, the current has changed here a little bit due to its internal calculations of this load, but basically this is kind of an uh, adjustment point. So I want to be able to see what happens to the output here if I turn it off turn off and on it's roughly 5 amp load so if it's a decent regulator you shouldn't see any large droops in in this trace here so you, you won't you won't see any uh, noise here so now I'm going to turn off and on the load and you see maybe a little bit of ripple but roughly 5 amps it's doing a good job and that's at the nominal value. So let's take it down to 12.3 volts. So I'm lowering the supply voltage. To right, right where it starts to regulate. All right, so try the same thing here. Same thing, looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to do what they call a mother load test. I've wired together these uh, 1157 light bulbs. If you look on the meter here, it's at the resistance. It's about 0.6 to 0.7 ohms. So that should pull over uh, 12 amps of current, actually closer to 20, but this will really test how well the regulation behaves on the, the DC to DC converter. Alright, so I got my same setup here, DC to DC converter, uh, the output, your input. Now I'm going to hook this to the same blue channel here, which is going to be your output. I'm going to hook this 
bank of 1157 light bulbs, which should easily pull 20 amps. So let's watch what the output does. So now we're at 12.3 volts on the blue trace. And then once I connect the alligator clip to the uh, output here, we should watch the light bulbs glow up and see what happens to the voltage. All right, so it looks like our voltage has dropped to 11.4 volts. Output still 13.3, and it's regulating, but not as well. So I assume that the voltage drop is due to the parasitics inside the DC-DC converter, uh, the resistance coupled with the resistance of the inductor that's used for the buck, and probably a fed in there as well. But for 11.4 volts at 20 amps, at less than uh, 20 bucks on Amazon, I think it's actually a pretty good deal. But again, if you need tighter tolerances and you can't afford this much um, voltage sag here, then you probably want to go with a little bit higher DC to DC converter with efficiency wise. Um, that's about it. Okay, so the next test I'm going to do is the output short circuit current test, which you probably don't want to do, but it says it's got built in short circuit protection and we're not going to need this anymore just want to see if it blows up or smokes or does something that it's not supposed to do so i'm going to short this don't do this at home kids it's not getting hot I haven't seen anything blow up or smoke come out it's sealed so no smoke should come out but looks like it survived the short circuit test here. Now what I'm going to do is see what the output voltage is. And looks like it's back up to 12.3 volts. So it looks like it's short circuit protected on the output. Doing the 20 amp load test uh, and the voltage sagging down to 11.4 volts. I just wanted to see what's really happening inside this uh, buck converter. And I want to hook this 20 amp load up and actually do a trigger on that um, event. So the blue is the output of the DC to DC converter. The yellow again is the power supply output. And so when I hook the load up, I want to see what's happening at that load and what how the, the DC to DC converter uh, responds to an instantaneous 20 amp load. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Okay, so the scope shot shows there's about a one second odd uh, drop in the voltage, so I suspect the short circuit current protection is kicking in, although it hasn't reached 20 amps yet, so it should be really a little bit higher than that. Um, so you're going to see a, a voltage sag while it's doing its uh, loopback response, and then obviously your, vo your voltage is kind of creeping up here, and then it recognizes it's not a short circuit and it turns a DC to DC converter on. Um, I'm not really that impressed with that function. It really should respond uh, a lot quicker than it did, but um, being that it's under 20 bucks, can't really complain. So uh, if you can't handle that kind of a droop for the uh, output voltage, um, this probably isn't your converter, but if it's just for a non-sensitive circuit, then uh, I think this will do the job. I want to look at the DC to DC converters rough efficiency. Again, since I've been using um, this load and 4.9 amps, I'm going to stick with that. So right now the setup I have is I've got this fluke meter uh, wired in series 
to the input of the DC to DC converter. So I'm actually reading right here, which is my current. This is the current going into the DC to DC converter. And obviously here, um, my 4.9 volts is my current out of the DC to DC converter. And I'm gonna use my two scope voltages of 12.3 and 13.4. So roughly I'm getting about um, 60 watts out at, at 4.9 amps and what's going into the DC to DC converter is roughly 63 watts. I'll kind of finalize the math here in a little bit. But so we've got a fairly decent efficiency. Now you can take different efficiencies of the DC to DC converter at you know one amp or two amp or five or ten or twenty. So in my case I just happen to do roughly five because that's what's convenient here. So it looks fairly to be a decent a decent converter uh, for less than 20 bucks you can't beat it so I give it a thumbs up and uh, anything changes I'll let you guys know okay for this uh, test I basically let the load run for about 15 minutes full bore here and took a thermal image and you can see it's uh, it's, it's pretty hot at the load there and as you kind of pan up you can see the wires that are they're also really hot I didn't care for that they are 12 gauge wires can they pump 20 amps yeah but she should be really using 10 gauge uh, the DC to DC converter got a little warm, but it seems, uh, I guess, normal. You can probably put a fan on it. So here's my setup. Um, I've got a solar panel input, about 30-something volts coming here on my two inputs. Um, those are going up here to this DC to DC converter. And then the outputs go over to uh, my battery terminals here. And ideally, this is a, not the best implementation. You'd want a charge controller to keep the batteries completely full, but I just want to kind of maintain them and keep them about 80% while I run this uh, this pump here. Um, it's rated at 15 amps max, but I don't think it's pulling that at all. But the problem was it was working good for about, I don't know, three or four days. Uh, I'd use it about eight hours a day. And then I noticed um, when I was kind of looking at it, um, the caps here completely mushroomed and uh, blew up the encapsulant so uh, as much as I wanted this guy to really work it doesn't look like it's uh, a very good DC to DC converter um, again you're feeding in 32 volts which is below it's uh, I think 45 or 48 volt uh, maximum and it's supposed to put out 12 volts at 20 amps into a battery um, which is basically topped off here um, so it's providing some nominal uh, charge current but it's not drawing near 20 amps so this should not have happened at all so I don't recommend this DC to DC converter um, after about four days, it should last longer than that. So, those are my results. Alright, so here's a final product. Pretty much burned itself out. everyone to see what the inside of a DC DC converter that's crappy looks like. There you go. There's your guts. And then the capacity pretty much blew itself out. So I wouldn't recommend getting this. Uh, not very well made as you can see. All right, there's my review in a nutshell, and if you like it, please subscribe and share, and I'll see what else I can post.